Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Hi there, welcome along to the Racing Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington and joining me this week to look ahead to some great racing are Paul Keeley and James Hill from the Racing Post, as well as Paddy Powers, Niall O'Reilly. Right then, here's the action. Flat racing at Ascot and Lingfield. There's a decent handicap hurdle up at Haydock. And then on Sunday, Leopardstown stages what could be some really telling races in terms of where the classics end up this year. Plus, we've got the first French classic of the year over at Longchamp. We'll start, though, with the 2.15 at Ascot, one of four races being shown live on ITV. It's the Les Ambassadeurs Casino Handicap. It's over a mile and a half. And Niall, what is the latest from Paddy Power? Uh, yeah, so setting sailors are 13 to 8 favourites, Sexton to 7 to 2, Now Children is 5 to 1, Autumn War 8 to 1, Edison Rock 9 to 1, and 14 to 1 bar. First of all, lads, what is your confidence level between 0 and 10 this week in terms of how well your tips will run on this show? Kills? Uh, I don't know, because I've had a very expensive uh, few days for me, so uh, not as confident as usual, but I still think I've got a couple of winners. So what's your number? What's your confidence rate? Six. Six. James? I was going to say six as well. Six. And Niall? Eight. Eight. Right, then we'll start with you, Niall. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the one I like here is Blue Laureate for Ian Williams. I just thought he was interesting. And the favourite setting sail, he looks a little bit short. Now, he is, he is entered in, in a group race, so they probably think a lot of him, though. He did The race he won last time was nothing special. It was nothing spectacular on the clock either. Uh, Blue Laureate ran into Elegiac last year. That horse is now rated £12 higher on similar ground that he'll encounter tomorrow. Um, after that, he was a staying on seventh. Sorry, a non-staying seventh in a, in a really hot handicap at York, won by, by Ghostwatch. I just think that's really strong form, and he still looks pretty unexposed off a mark of 89. Now, the trainer hasn't been in brilliant form, but he had a winner yesterday, so at the prices, I think he's 8-1. to one. I'll chance him. What are you going to go for, Kills? Uh, I find it very hard to look away from the favourite, to be honest. He was, uh, uh, he was very well regarded as a two-year-old. He had an entry in the Racing Post Trophy, as it was then. Um, obviously, picked up an injury, couldn't go there, didn't come back until... Uh, last month, uh, one on the all-weather, six lengths, pretty much doing handstands as he liked. Now, it might not have been great on the clock, but a second was second and a handicap off 87 next time. He's got a mark of 96. I think he's obviously coming to Ascot to have a look at a, look at the track before Royal Ascot. needs to go up one, two, three pound just to be able to get into a, to a, a Royal Ascot handicap. Um, as, if he doesn't bounce, I, I, I can see him being different class. James, what's your selection going to be? Uh, I'm going to go for Autumn War. Um, I like the favourite. He's a, a nice horse. I just think um, on what he's achieved so far, it's a bit of a short price. Uh, Autumn War, um, been improving with every run pretty much for the last 12 months, really. Um, he'll like the, the longer trip and the conditions, and he uh, should come on for his run. He put up another personal best on that uh, time at Doncaster. I'm expecting better here. What are you expecting by way of ground, James Ascot? Well, it might get a few more showers, actually. Um, Is that the forecast? That's the forecast I looked at. There could be a bit of rain tonight and a few showers tomorrow. So um, I could ride soft on the round course and um, sit on the slow side on the straight track. Is that your assessment as well, Kills? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, it looks like they had loads of rain, 25 mil on Tuesday, and then 8, 8 mil yesterday. So. so it can affect Lingfield as well. They're both uh, exactly. similarly located and both you know, very prone to to softening up if it does get wet, aren't they? Okay then, right, we're off and running. The 250, only four runners, unfortunately, in the Kerry group. Buckhound Stakes and our old mate Salouen is favourite, isn't he, Niall? Yeah, Salouen is our four to seven favourite. Bersanti is 13 to eight. What about Carlo, 14 to one. And Pilansberg is 25 to one. Kills, what's your strategy here? Well, oh, I mean, do you want to be back on a horse at odds on that hasn't won since 2016, uh, which is Salouin? I mean, for all the great races that he's run, he has won a Windsor Maiden and a Salisbury Novice, and that's it. He's not dodgy, is he? Uh, I don't think he's dodgy, no. I mean, he's done, you know, he's done, he's always been extremely highly tried. But I think the way he ran in the Coronation Cup last year when he just got touched off by Cracksman, if you remember. Oh, I certainly uh, do. I was on him. And of course, and of course he, was, he was going really well in the derby when he got stopped in his run. He's obviously been primed for another run in the Coronation Cup. That's what I can see anyway. Uh, and he was beaten first time up in this race last year by Barsanti. Uh, so I would favour Barsanti, especially in a small field, uh, likes the ground. But not a huge betting. Uh, but it's, no, it's, yeah, it's a four-runner race. I mean, it's, it, you know, we'll be looking some. There's, there's eight other meetings on the day, so we'll be looking for something else to bet. Should we skim race. over this, James, or have you got a strong thought? 
no strong forwards. I, I think Salawan will probably turn the form around with Barzandi from, from last year's race on this slower surface. I think he's a, a, a bit of a better horse, actually, uh, 12 months on than he was then. He seems to be one of these horses who improves as he gets older. Um, doesn't win that often, but he does have some really good form and, and some good form at Ascot too, so I don't think the track's against him. And mustn't it be great for a yard like Sylvester Kirk to have a, a horse like this so they can, you know, they can bring along and, and, and go for decent prizes? Yeah, and no, he's in good form at the moment, so it's, it's good for him that he's bringing out his star names. Niall? Uh, yeah, I thought Salomon was a stone cold certainty here. I, I actually didn't think Bersanti'd handle the ground. He's only running it twice and he was sort of disappointing both times. Salomon handles the ground, he obviously nearly beat Cracksman on it last year. Um, I think I've seen 10 to 11 in places that I'd be taking that. Uh, we're obviously 4 to 7. Uh, yeah, Salwin for me. Do you get involved at odds on much now? Is that your thing? Well, if I was pricing that, I'd probably be closer to 2 on Salwin. So 10 to 11, I'd back that, yeah. I wouldn't right. be a big odds on punter, though. Okie dokes, 320 at Ascot, the St James's Wealth Management British EBF Premier Phillies Handicap. I'm sure Kiels is a, a customer of St James's Wealth Management. Uh, let's get the betting from Paddy Power. Yes, so Red Starlight is our 9 to 4 favourite at the moment. Adorable is 11 to 4. Bella Regatta 4 to 1. La Brega 15 to 2. Daddy's Girl 9 to 1 and 11 1 bar. Away you go, James. Well, Red Starlight's got the best form. I think she's quite difficult to oppose. Uh, she's a bit exposed, though. I mean, I, I'm loathe to taking a, a, a short price uh, in a race like this. Um, for a bit of each way value, Bubble and Squeak. Um, has been running well. She, she was um, third, uh, narrowly beaten at Brighton last time. Uh, dropping back in trip here, but the slower um, surface, I think, will help her kind of negate that. And um, she's got some very good form with one or two of these. She's um, as much as £12 better off with Contrive on their, their run at Newmarket uh, last season. Um, and, you know, with the free places, I think um, there's a little bit of each way value there. Any thoughts here, Niall? Yeah, I thought those two very interesting ones. Uh, the first one's adorable. Um, it's just similar connections to last year. Sorry, I should say the same connections. Um, they won it with Urban Fox. Uh, she's Group 2 entered as well, so she could be well treated with a mark of 101, but there's a bit of guessing involved there, I think. The other one that I'm going to back, or that I have backed, is the Group 1 entered, Bella Regatta. Um, she won a handicap at Newmarket last time, beating Moves swiftly off 88, and it's gone up to a mark of 96 now. And now there were three other mile races on that card, which is something I like to see. Um, one was a group one that Lawrence won, and the other was a novice race won by Turgenev. Bella Regatza was only half a second slower than Lawrence overall, though at faster closing sections, and then was a second and a half faster than Turgenev. So that would make her look very well treated to me off a mark of 96, uh, and I think she'd be competing in higher grades this season. Uh, I think she could go off five. I think I've seen as big as seven one around. So, yeah, I'd definitely be backing her. That's the most convincing case we've had so far. Kills, what do you think here? Stolen my thunder, I'm afraid. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's a genuine two-horse race. doesn't include Red Starlight, who doesn't stay a mile on soft ground at all. Uh, she won't go a favourite and she won't get home. Uh, adorable. They like said Urban Fox was was claimed was was bought out of a different stable last year. Entered in group races, won this race before winning the before winning the Pretty Polly. She's got Group Two entries, but after um, after winning that race in Newmarket last year, trainer Hugh Morrison said about Bella Regatta, "I'd be very disappointed if we don't get uh, Black Type by the next year." He's put her in Group Twos, Group One uh, as well, uh, and he said she liked the ground when she won. It was on the easy side at Newmarket. I think everything, and these, these group races are within the next few weeks as well. So there's every reason for her to be ready. Uh, yeah, I think the seven to one is absolutely crazy price. Oh, excellent. Okay, four o'clock at Ascot, the highlight of the day. It's the Tote Victoria Cup. Over seven furlongs, zillions of runners. Hopefully some extra places with news on that and the latest betting. Here's Niall. Yeah, we're paying six places here. Um, how many runners? 28, is there? Uh, yeah, the favourite is Kate Byron at the moment. He's 8-1. to one. Kinneran is 8-1. to one. Blue Mist, 9-1. to one. Remarkable, 10-1. to one. Glorious Journey, 11-1. to one. Sanad, 11-1. Rip Orf, 11-1. Pres Presidential, 11-1. And 12-1 to one bar. And it's with you, Niall. Uh, yeah, the one I like here is Sanad for Michael Wiggum. Now, he's only won a Class 3 at Kempton. Um, it was a very fast time, and he won it quite impressively. The second Love Dreams came out and ran a really good, good race at Goodwood, Frank the Form, last week. The time was actually the third fastest seven furlongs run at Kempton in about a year. So the fact he's only gone up four pounds uh, would make him look very well treated to me. The trainer has only had him for five runs, so he could still be improving. Now, I'm not sure about the ground, uh, though the dam, Queen's Logic, she loved it. And his half-sister, Lady of the Desert, went really well in it too. All weather form translates really well to Ascot, so I think this could really suit. Uh, I'm not sure about the draw, he's in 20, but there's, there's enough pace around. Uh, so yeah, he'd be a good each-way bet for me. And Kills. 
Well, talking of East Ray Betts, if every firm went six places, Ripoff would be about seven to two because he just loves Ascot. He's run four times at Ascot last year. He beat 82 of his 85 rivals. Two wins, including this race, and then won one later on at September. First three runs on fast ground. Second one, you had a question, you know, will he handle soft ground? And he was second to Raising Sand. Off a mark of 97. Ran fifth in the Lincoln. Um, just to show that he's got all his old ability. You can ignore the last one at Newby because he was on the wrong side and never involved. He just loves this place and he just will be in the frame. You can't you can't kick him out of it. Have to back him each way. I'll add presidential as well too. Won five times last year for Roger Fell, who won uh, the big international handicap here with Burnt Sugar last year. So knows what it's like to win these big handicaps. And presidential, um, best form last year on soft ground. Really, really eye-catching effort. First time up at the Craven meet and finished third. Missed the kick. Uh, the the um, the winner does sort of dominated from the front. Still came through, travelling really really well. Uh, I think one of those two will win. Good stuff, James. Um, I'm absolutely in agreement with Kiel's here. Um, rip off last year's winner. I don't don't think you can leave him out of the equation. Loves Ascot. Uh, good record with, with Hayley Turner up as well. The trainer, I mean, he, he's just got a good record in this race generally. And uh, conditions won't be a problem for him at all. I think he's going to run a big race for sure. And presidential, I, I think this course will really suit him. I don't, he hasn't really got any form here uh, before, but um, he's a, a horse who thrives off a, a fast run race. And uh, he ran well on his reappearance. If he comes on for that, he, he's got a good chance too. OK, don't forget bookmakers all have an array of different each way places it is important to check how many they're paying because if you back all like rip off you need as many places as possible thanks chaps that is ascot let's do lingfield next so does an each way bet mean that my horse has to do part of the race in reverse Everyone loves a newbie. That's why Paddy Power Games are giving all new customers 60 free spins on daily jackpot games. New Paddy Power Games customers only. One per customer. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Right then, Lingfield stages its big flat card of the year with the Derby and Oaks trials. And again, Kills, before we look at the races, we all know that Lingfield is one of the most kind of susceptible tracks uh, on the turf to, to going changes when it does get wet. So what kind of conditions? Well, it's already soft now. I mean, if they get, they probably want a bit more, actually. They don't want to dry up because it's one of those places that can get really sticky. I mean, if it, if it stays dry from now and it'll be sticky soft ground and it'll be hard work. Uh, so, yeah, they probably want a little bit more, but it's going to be soft, whatever, I think. You'll need to get home then. OK, 155, the first of the ITV races, the Betfred Mobile Oaks trial. I, I could say a mile, nearly a mile and four furlongs. And how do Paddy Power bet? Uh, yeah, so Frank Alina is our two to one favourite. Anna Perna is five to two. Toteki is three to one. King Power is six to one and 12 to one bar. Kills, who's going to win this? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because you know, most of these, they have your normal entries for an Oaks trial. They're, they're in the Ribblesdale, they're in the Oaks. Uh, but then you've got William Haggis trained Frank Alina, who's favourite. She's in the Pretty Polly, she's in the Musa Dora, she's in, she, she's in another group, uh, group race as well. Uh, so he obviously thinks a hell of a lot of her. But I kept watching that race at Yarmouth that she won, which the form is, is not great at all. Uh, and she does not look like a horse that's going to want soft ground. She doesn't pick her knees up or anything like that, and it just will be, uh, she'll get stuck in the mud. I was half waiting, you know, half expecting to, to get pulled out. Lots of frankles do go on the ground, so I could be entirely wrong, but it doesn't look like a soft ground horse to me. I will take a chance uh, on King Power, who was second at Sandown, re really well talked up by Andrew Baldwin. Uh, the, the horse who won it is really well bred and, and, and well liked as well. Um, so I'd give her a little chance, not a race I'm going to get massively involved in that. I thought King Power ran really well at Sandown, I must say. Since when do you start getting all expert with your knee action? No, you watching, <laughs> watching racing for 30 years, about time I learned something. <laughs> all I see is just this blur of brown <laughs> fur moving across. I haven't got a clue. James, what do you fancy? Well, it's, it's tough, but um, just looking at the runners, there aren't many there who you, f you feel are going to handle conditions that well at all. Um, Tortiki, who's got a reasonable profile for this, I mean, by see the stars, so you wouldn't have thought soft ground would suit, but there's plenty of um, evidence that it would suit on the dam side, if you look at the pedigree. Um, she uh, was uh, beat a, a decent filly of John Gosden, so high at uh, Chelmsford last November, well clear of the rest, um, looks to have a good attitude, nice looking filly actually, and um, if she can handle the conditions, then she's got to be thereabouts. Niall, who's your fancy for the Oaks trial? Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of nervous about my case now because it's kind of the opposite of what Keels just said. Um, yeah, Frank Alina, she won a terrible race at Yarmouth, um, but they went really slow and she kind of had the sprint at the end. I think she's a lot better than that. I think she'll improve for the trip. I thought she'd definitely handle the ground base in the dam side. Uh, who Did you see her knee ground. action though? 
yeah, yeah, I, I wasn't overly worried about it, but no, I, I can understand where he's coming from. It can be very difficult to tell. Uh, she's by Frankel. A lot of them hand, handled soft ground, as we've seen with the, the Oaks trial winner at Chester, because she was obviously a doubt she was by Frankel. Um, yeah, I thought she'd really handle it. Um, I thought she'd definitely improve a lot. The other one I, I thought was interesting was Toteki that James mentioned there, but yeah, I'll stick with Frankelina. Okay, and in well, the tooth... Sorry, it's worth mentioning that it is... On paper, a terrible race. Okay. The, the top rate, the top rated horse uh, has got a best RPR, something like 85, trained by Mark Johnson, Cape Islay, who has won on very soft ground as well. So might be interesting as a 40 in the one shot. Okay. The blow out. So we don't necessarily think we're going to see the Oaks winner at Lingfield, but Doubt I think I, I don't think you can say the same about the Derby trial because Aidan sends over a horse who, at one point in his two-year-old career, looked to be extremely special. Maybe the gloss came off slightly in his last run, but Anthony Van Dyke is decent. So it's the 2.30, the Betfred Derby trial, and Niall, I guess Anthony Van Dyke is jolly. Yeah, he's our even money jolly. Um, Cap, Cap Francais is 7-2, Pablo Escobar 7-1, Eagles by day 8-1, and it's 14-1 bar. What do you make of this horse then, James? I've always liked Anthony Van Dyke, but... Um he has not looked like a derby horse to me, and particularly in these conditions. I, I would think this could find him out in terms of stamina. Um, yeah, but it's a good race. There's some you know, decent contenders in there. I was really impressed by Cap Francais at um, Epsom last time when um, second in the derby trail. Kept on really nicely. Showed a good attitude, and I think that's what you're going to need here because conditions are going to be tough. Um, plenty of uh, evidence that the ground will suit on the dam side. And uh, definitely my selection. I, I can't see it finishing out the first two anyway. James, very strong on Cap Francais. Niall, who do you like? Uh, yeah, like Anthony Van Dyke, he could be different class to these. Um, his run behind quarter in the national stakes in a monster time is a long way clear of what the rest have done. Now, I thought I'd be pretty strong on him, but the more I looked at it, I have a big question mark about him getting home on this ground. Um, it's a big step up and trip to a mile and, mile and three and a half, isn't it? Um, the dam on the dam side, she was a sprinter. Yeah, I just have plenty of doubts to be taking him on at the price he is. Um, like, off the rest, Cap Francais, I know he ran well at Epsom, but I think that was a bad race. Eagles by day, only won a Salt three maiden. The one I quite like each way is, is Pablo Escobar for William Haggis, who I'm hoping is going to have a good day. Uh, he was beaten in a handicap at Bath last time by a living legend. He ran quite well behind Circus Maximus the other day. Uh, for a handicap, that was actually quite a fast time, um, and I think the form is actually very useful. Uh, the ground was probably fast enough for him, uh, so I think he wants some ease, which he'll get here, and he's definitely a strong stayer. Um, if Anthony Van Dyke stays, he'll probably win. If not, I think this dad will win at the price. I'm definitely going to back him each way. Do you share the guy's doubts over Anthony Van Dyke? Uh, yeah, I do. It's funny, you know, um, we're taking on, you know, the breeding experts at Coolmore and saying he won't stay. Now, he's got an entry in the Irish 2000 Guineas, but every other group entry he's got is over a mile and a half. So it looks like they're reasonably confident he's going to get the trip. But I don't think you can be. The dam, the dam side is all speed. Dam was a sprinter uh, out of exceeding himself. Uh, I just... I would doubt it. Any other stable, you would just doubt it. You, you would say, no, it won't stay. If he does stay, it's a certainty because his, his, his form was absolutely miles better than everything else, and that's what you've got to worry about. I have lost a lot of money so far this year, laying short price day, no blind. Got one back with Kew Gardens on the, yeah. on Thursday, but uh, it, it has been a very expensive process, and I, I'm probably going to end up laying him rather than backing anything. You can see the case for Cap Francais, probably short enough. I thought Eagles by day was... You know, just looks like a real strong stayer in the making. Michael Bell seems reasonably excited about him. And, you know, if I was going to have a bet, it would be on him, but it would be minimum stakes. Could be a good race, James, in terms of horses for, you know, running in decent level for the rest of the season, do you think? Or Yeah, I'm not saying there's going to be a, a derby when they come out of it. But, yeah, no, I think decent horses over a mile and a half. Possibly one of decent ledger types, maybe. OK. Well, the, um, funny enough, Aidan O'Brien has won this four times. Uh, not one of those four winners ever won another race. It's not a race that he runs his best horses in. Now, Kew Gardens ran in it Kew last God, year. I was going to say. He got beat last year. He no got way. beat in it. But he would, uh, Night to behold. <coughs> he got beat in it last year. And I think I think Aidan O'Brien doesn't send anywhere near his best horses to this. I think Kew Gardens surprised them with how much he improved afterwards because he'd already been beaten at a short price before he ran there. So, um, you know, the fact that Anthony Van Dyke's come in here, I, it's almost like a black mark against his future with, with what the other horses have done. Who's the last Derby winner to run in this? God, that was Kayazi. Must be High Rise. High Rise was, was the last, I think. I don't know where. Did he, he won it, didn't he? Yeah. He won this race. And he, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. 3.40 is the other televised heat down at Leafy, and it's the Betfred Supports Jack Berry House. Chartwell, Philly Stakes over seven furlongs. If you do have a nice win on this race, do feel free to send Jack Berry House a few quid. It's a fantastic place and a fantastic cause. 
What's the betting, Niall? Uh, yes, yeah, so Pretty, sorry, this is our MBS race, so it's money back as a free bet if Pretty Baby wins, and she's our 15 to 8 favourite. Perfection is 100 to 30, Devant is 5 to 1, Dancing Star 6 to 1, Cherry Lady 8 to 1, Irene 10 to 1, Betty F 12 to 1, and 33 to 1, Shepherd Market. And we're back with you, Noel, to go first. Yeah, I didn't like the look of this race at all. Um, I'm just going to take a chance on the French horse, Devant, here, uh, the only three year old in the field. I don't know a massive amount about her, but, but she definitely goes on the ground. Um, yeah, just getting the allowance, I was just going to side her because I don't think the others are up to a huge amount. Uh, she's a decent price as well, a 5-1. to one. OK, Kiels? Uh, yeah, almost echoed out. It's funny enough, you, you know it's like seven furrows at Lingford. You normally want to be on that rail, don't you? And she's got still seven of eight. I think Pretty Baby's quite low. Lots of the form British horses are quite low. And they all have fast ground form and it's soft ground. Devont has won both starts on soft ground. One of them is in a group three, which means she carries a penalty, so some of that weight for age is negated, but if I was going to have a bet, it'd be on her. So you want to be drawn high, don't you? Yeah. Okay, James. I, I think the two um, with the best form uh, for the home team are a Pretty Baby and Dancing Star. And actually, Dancing Star, I think, is slightly better off for their Goodwood run last summer when she was very unlucky not to win. Uh, but I'm going to go with Pretty Baby here simply because it uh, looks to me, if you look at her pedigree, like she'll handle the conditions much better. Uh, I don't think the conditions will be too much of a problem for her as they will be for Dancing Star. And um, she's got a good record fresh too uh, and hasn't done anything wrong. So she'd be my one. Uh, OK, let's look at Haydock. Jumps fans, your little moment on the ITV card. It's the 310, the Potemps Network, Swinton, handicap hurdles, handicap hurdle even, two miles, competitive affair. Niall, how are you betting? Uh, yeah, so we're paying five places here for 17 runners, uh, which is obviously a good offer. Uh, Head in our market at the moment is Mr. Fisher at 6 to 1. Sophia's Rock is also 6 to 1. Christopher Wood is 6 to 1 as well. Dino Velvet, 9 to 1. La Patria, 10 to 1. Leon Cavallo, 10 to 1. John Constable, 10 to 1. And 12 to 1 bar. If DJ was on the panel, he'd go, I'm going to give one last chance to Mr. Fisher, but he's not here. Who are you going to give a chance to, Kills? Well, I'm going to give a chance to the winner in 2017, John Constable. Now, he's, he's, he's a very interesting horse. He was fourth in it in 2016. He won by 14 lengths in 2017 off a mark of 134 and he was seventh the following year but off a £22 higher mark. He'd have won it just as easily if he was running back off 134. Now, he has sort of lost the plot this season, didn't take the fences early in the season, come right down to handicap, trying to put him away three months ago, uh, three and a half months ago actually, uh, and he comes back here fresh off a mark of 132. Now, he's only an eight-year-old. It's not like he's turning up 10 or 11, uh, having seen his best. There's no reason why he can't be as good as he was. I was kind of sort of hoping that I would see the words, you know, the, the, the sign that he'd had a wind up, uh, but it doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be the case. Um, even so, if he's fresh and the trainer can get him back, now, the trainer has won the race four of the last six years, uh, and this was the one horse, well, he had two horses in, but one of them was never really likely to get in. Uh, I think he's got to be given another chance because he loves the place. So will you be checking him out in the paddock to see if he looks a picture? I'll be at Ascot, probably, probably oh, a little kills. bit drunk, will To see if he looks a picture. Oh, right, yeah, yeah very good. Yeah, well done. Yeah. You, you yeah. played that trick on me last time as well. I, I missed did it. you too. miss it as well? Did I you? do that one every time he runs. <laughs> <laughs> We're all thick as shit, are we? <laughs> <laughs> we have been to the Louvre <laughs> We, we did, just had yeah. a day punting, punting, didn't we, on how yeah. old, oh, the, old pictures the pictures were. were. James, who wins the Swinton? Well, uh, John Constable's obviously interesting with the trainer's record in the race. Do you think he could be in the frame? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, the, the value for me here is Nietzsche. And uh, he won the Great Wood uh, back at Cheltenham in, um, in November. That's very good form, actually, because he's oh, second horse. Can I butt in? No. Well, right. I have. It has just appeared on our website. He has had a wind operation. He has had a wind up. Breaking news, John operation. Constable has had a wind up. He now wins. Look, even so even that you're now extremely confident? I'm now extremely yeah. confident, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, James. I, you can understand why we broke in with that news. Yeah, no, no. Well, that interests me as well. Right, Nietzsche. N Nietzsche, I think, is a good, good each way value. I mean, he's £9 higher than um, for his Great Wood victory. But as I said, that is very good form. Uh, he's done very little wrong since. Um, two good runs recently, when third at Aintree at the Grand National Meeting and also on the flat at Doncaster last time. Um, Danny McMenamin, very useful claimer indeed, takes off a very handy seven pounds. Uh, they get on really well, these two, and I'm expecting another big run from him. OK, Are you, have you taken the, uh, the knife to John Constable's price now, um, now, now that you've heard that breaking news, <laughs> or were you well aware of it? I, I had just become aware of it. it. It's funny, I looked at John Constable for so long and I just couldn't bring myself to put him up without some sort of change, like new headgear or a wind up. And I haven't seen that yet. I'll definitely have a few quid in him. Price is he again? He's 10 to 1. 10s, lovely. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm annoyed I haven't spotted that before. Um, but yeah, they the don't. They, they don't have to declare. The BHA don't send it over until they're declared. Yeah, don't beat right. yourself up. No, <laughs> this, this, happened in April, this happened in April, so it was only when they were declared. That's why I was hoping yeah. that we would see it now, and it has finally appeared. Great. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he's, he's very interesting. I probably would have put him up if I, if, I, if I knew that, but I'll just go what I have here. I was going to throw two darts at it. The first is Mr. Fisher. He's a little bit of a cliff horse at the moment for me, kind of like DJ. Um, I backed him in the Scottish Champion Hurdle just before he, he obviously came out really late. Um, I just think he's well treated off 145. He obviously won at Haydock, beating Bright Forecast, giving him weight, so it just looks as Mark look look quite fair. He could outclass these. The other is Faisola for uh, Ollie Murphy. He fits the recent profile of winners of the race. He's an ex-flat horse with plenty of speed. He was unexposed for the trainer. He bolted up at Plumpton last time uh, on good ground, which he needs, and I think it should be okay from here. He probably wants it a little bit faster. He did. He beat the useful legal history last time, who, who was still well treated. So even though he's 12 higher now, um, with this speed track to really suit, I think he'll run well each way. But yeah. John Constable a bet too. Did you meet DJ in Punchestown Kills? I did, yes. Did he uh, put a dent in that lifetime of Guinness he owes you? Uh, no, actually. We went for a pint. Thing? We wiped, wiped the slate things. I laid him Gardens of Babylon and he said he'd, we'd have to get rid of that. But anyway, no, I bought him a pint, but he was very professional. Did you have fun in Punchestown? Did any postcast listeners come up and say hello? Uh, yeah, it's funny, actually. I got, some bloke contacted me and said, would you, you know, would you mind if I bought you a drink? And I was, oh, yeah, all right, then why not? So, I thought, so uh, we were up in the racing post box and I said, I'll come down after the second race. Anyway, there was four of them, two of them complete degenerate gamblers, and it was such a good crack, I didn't go up back up to the box until just before the last. <laughs> <laughs> About 10 points in Guinness. <laughs> Excellent. It's a fantastic day, and I went and saw them again briefly the next day as well. Though. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Excellent. Lovely lads. Great. Okay, right then. Also on set, there's loads of meetings. We've got the rest of Lingfield, rest of Haydock, rest of Ascot. We've also got Nottingham, Cork, Hexham, Warwick, and Thursk. What else have you got for us, James Hill? I've actually got a couple at Thursk in the evening. Um, in the opening race at 5.40, uh, Point of Woods um, lost his way a little last term. Um, but he's very interesting here because he's got a very good record fresh. He, he ran first time out at Doncaster last season, absolutely bolted up. Seven pound lower now. Um, and he's got a good record at first too, so he's interesting. And later on, a justice lady for Robert Cow hasn't won for a while, uh, but she's well treated on her best form. Um, Danny Tudhope's been booked up for this one. And that's quite interesting. He does, doesn't ride that often for, for Robert Cal, Danny Tutte, but uh, his record in the last five seasons on Cal's older horses, two wins, three places from, uh, from eight rides. So I'll be going with her too. OK, Kills, what's in your round? Yeah, I literally won at Haydock, first race, which is two o'clock, I believe, two o'clock, two o'clock at Haydock. Yeah, long distance handicap hurdle, headed by Whisper. Oh, wow. Returning to the track oh, after... Right. You know, 500 odd days off, over hurdles, mark of 163, no idea how he's going to run. I mean, the fact that he's actually coming out suggests that he might be fit and well. Uh, but he keeps most of them out of handicap, and that makes me interested. Not in weight for me, who I promised I'd given up on after he didn't win at Sandown last but on Double Treasure, who won last time out. I think he could be very well handicapped. He's been a chaser himself, but he's been running well over hurdles. OK, he won a Tuppence Apeny race last time out, but uh, I think he's probably going to be, you know, spot on for this. What time's that one? Two o'clock. Two o'clock, excellent, that's good. And Niall, before you give us your horses, I think you had some shout outs from Punchestown as well, didn't you? Yeah, I just I just met a group. They were they were the owners of Ellie Mac. Uh, they were just kind of telling me their story. So the guy I was talking to was called John Schuster. Uh, they actually set up the syndicate after um, his son Nikolai died in that Berkeley tragedy, the, the balcony incident. Nikolai was a big racing fan, and, and that's why they set up the syndicate. They obviously have got a few wins out of her. And she was absolutely cantering at the second last when, when Rachel Blackmore came off her and got a horrible fall. So I said that I'd give them a shout out if it won, but they went so close I said I'd do it anyway. But yeah, hopefully they get a few more wins out of her over the summer. Excellent stuff. Nice one, Niall. Okay, so what else? have you got? Uh, yeah, just one. The 745 Tursk. Uh, it's a horse I've been following for a while and I think today's going to be the day or tomorrow I should say. It's called Super Kid for Tim Easterby. Uh, he's down to a mark of 77, having been as high as 96 at the start of last season. Uh, he actually won a handicap of 83, um, I don't know, halfway through the season or so. Uh, he's been bad so far this season. Do he finally get a ground with a bit of ease in it tomorrow? And this is over his ideal trip. Now in recent form he should be a very big price, but I think there'll be cash for him and it could be the horse to get us out at the end of the day. Oh, lovely. OK, let's get the sack Saturday naps. This will not be beaten. Paul Keeley? Yeah, I like Bella Ragazza in the 325 at Ascot. James Hill? Uh, Cap France in the 230 at Lingfield, the Derby Trail. And Niall? Yeah, 325 Ascot, Bella Ragazza as well. That's fine, we don't mind that at all. Let's do Sunday next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. 
Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 80 plus, begumbleaware.org. It's the Racing Post weekend postcast. Bruce Millington, Paul Keeley, James Hill and Paddy Powers. Niall O'Reilly looking ahead to three decent group races at Leopardstown on Sunday, starting with the 2.15. The Coma Group Amethyst Stakes over a mile for three-year-olds and upwards. What's the latest betting, Niall? Um, sorry, we don't have this up, actually. That's uh, all right. Tell us who wins instead, then. Uh, yeah, I thought this was very tricky, so I'm just going to back last year's winner, Z, but depending on the price. Um, he ran a cracker behind Imogen on reappearance, which looks useful for him. And like I said, it just doesn't look the strongest race. Uh, I don't think the ground will suit a few of these. Like I think Verbal Dexterity wants it nearly heavy at this stage. So, yeah, Z, but for me. Why, is it still firm over there? Uh, no, it'll probably be good to soft by Sunday. It's good to yield at the moment, but... Um, yeah. I think he just wants it even softer and that probably heavy, like oh. I said. I, I've stopped backing verbal dexterity. If it chucks it down, I might give him one last chance. Kills, who do you like? Uh, yeah, I think it's a tight one. I'm just trying to get the mass uh, come up here. Uh, yeah, I think Hazapur will come on an awful lot for his run last time and probably go close. I think it's a tight one between the top three and maybe maybe Zebra has got a chance as well, but I'd imagine the betting will focus on Hazapur, psychedelic front and verbal dexterity. James, have you got a confident choice? Not confident, but I... Agree with Keels. I think Hazapur's got a good chance. Tough sort always runs his race. Um, interesting drop, dropping back in trip, and he'll come on for his uh, reappearance effort as well. So yeah, I think Hazapur will go well. Okay, when you hear the Darren Stown Stud 1,000 and 2,000 Guineas trials, your ears always pick up. And you think, oh, there'll be some clues here. But in actual fact, if you look at the last ten winners of each, they're not exactly dripping with horses that have gone on to dominate at Epsom. But let's see if that's going to be the case this year or whether some stars emerge. We'll do the 1,000 guineas trial first. It's at 2.50 and Paddy Power bet as follows. I actually don't want this up either, sorry. I'm surprised. I wouldn't even know where to start, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It looks a dreadful race. Does it? Yeah. There's no way on earth that a, that a guineas winner is going to come out of this. You've got three, you've got three maiden winners that... I've only run into the low seventies, and you think, well, they're going to, you know, they're going to improve or whatever. But you know, I know. Sorry, that's talk, that's the Darren Stan that I was talking about. No, no, it's it's, it's got Lady Waterby, Hammerina, uh, and uh, Dean Street Doll. They're all running, you know, low figures, and you think, well, you know, they might come on. And then you look at the others and think, well, they haven't done all that much either. Like you know, so, so I would, one of them's got a win. Uh, one of them's got a win. I would absolutely guess, and I would go for Mia Mento of Thomas Mullins. Uh, a couple of reasonable pieces of form last year. You're not talking massive figures. She ran an 88 uh, RPR, went third at 33 to one on a final start in September. It's not a great race. James, do you share Kills' enthusiasm? No, I'm not not really infused by, by any of these. Really, I do agree with Kills. I don't think it's a great great trial for the the Irish 1000 Guineas. I think the top rated Philly Trefius um, would be the one I'd side with. I mean, she beat the Oaks favourite Pink Dogwood. Uh, over this distance last season, and she put up some uh, other decent pieces of form uh, as a juvenile as well. So I go with her. I'll tell you what, that pink dogwood. I was looking at her form figures. I know form figures, you know, don't tell the whole story, but they're not really a classic winner's form figures, are they? I suppose there might be an Aidan O'Brien classic winner's form. She's figure. she's all hype at the moment. Um, we yet to see the best of her though. I think they're, they're very sweet in her, aren't they? Mm, they also. certainly are. Uh, Niall, have you got the winner of this for us? Yeah, like Keel said, this this looks a terrible race, but uh, I'm actually going to side with the same horse as James. Uh, Tretius, I, I think, will win this. Uh, now, if she was stepped up and tripped to a mile two last time, she probably didn't stay, but she didn't get the clearest run. She was checked a couple of times. Uh, previous to that, she was set or fourth behind Hermosa, who's obviously won the guineas. Um, she was a good fourth at Leopard's End, a decent race behind Sparkle and Joy with Iridesa just in front of her. And previous to that, she beat Pink Dogwood on good to yielding ground over a mile. So the only time she's won is over a mile. And this is only her second start over a mile in a terrible race. I think she'll win. OK, have you got Dane to price up the 325, which is the Derenstown Stud Derby trial? Uh, no, it was just we, we had doubts about what was going to run, uh, so, so we left it, and it'll be up later on today. Oh, OK. So over mile and two, and James, who's going to win it? I think um, Broom will sweep the floor with these. Oh, very good. Uh, that's the best I can do with my puns. There's no such saying as sweep the floor with these. Oh, that's good. Wipe right. the floor with them. Yeah. Or I suppose... Yeah, you can sweep the floor, right? You can't sweep the floor with them, can you? you can sw what does sweep the floor mean? Wipe the floor. Sweep the floor, with, wipe the floor, the floor means with broom. You're just missing out of the A. Oh, oh. Sweep the same thing, isn't it? Surely. Oh. <laughs> As David Brent once said, that's not a saying. <laughs> right, anyway, sorry, James. It was a very funny joke. Well, what's the actual solid case for it? Uh, the solid case. He's, he's the best horse in the race. Um, proved himself um, over this course and distance last time. Won an eight-length winner. 
Um, he's, he's well clear on official ratings. Um, he was a net second uh, in the Lagardère, the Group 1 Lagardère in France last term, and uh, also uh, second to uh, Madmu before that. So he's the best horse in the race. I can't really see many of these uh, troubling him um, on what they've pr- uh, shown so far. OK, if you're at the Edinburgh Fis- Festival in August, check out James Hill's show for that. Um, <laughs> Niall, <laughs> what do you like? Um, yeah, Broom could be very short here, and if he is, I'd be very keen. Will he to handle take... the ground? Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's better, be, isn't he, it? He should be. Yeah, sorry. James isn't laughing at that. He's getting his revenge. <laughs> Too funny. Um, yeah, no, he um, he could be very short. And I said after his last run, I was just looking at sections that I'd be very keen to take him on at a very short price. He obviously won very easily. I think he won't be eight lengths, but but he got a very good ride off a strong pace, which collapsed. And I think he looked more impressive than he really was. And on the balance of his form, I'm not sure he's really that good. He'd be one I wouldn't be keen at all on for the Derby. Um, I'm going to back one here. It's only one of Maiden, uh, Buckhurst for, for Joseph O'Brien, Wayne Lord and takes the ride. Like I said, he's only won a Leopard's Ten Maiden, but that was actually a decent race. And I think he can improve a lot. And if there is chinks and broom, I think he might be the one to, to take advantage. Gills, what's your fancy? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably between those two, to be honest. Um, Buckhurst quite interesting. Uh, Joseph O'Brien said afterwards, he said, I'm well surprised that he managed to have, have the speed to win over a mile because, he, you know, it's all it's all stamina at the pedigree. So he's going to improve a lot. He's going to need to improve a lot. That's the thing. I'd imagine Broome will probably have his measure this time, but ain't a race I'll be betting it. OK, will you be betting on the 255 at Longchamp? It's the French 2000 guineas, the Emirates Pour des de Poulain. Over a mile, and do we have any betting yet, Niall? Yeah, we do. Uh, Persian King is our five to six favourite. Never No More is eleven to two. Shaman is eight to one. Munitions is ten to one. Green, <laughs> my French isn't great. We'll just say ten to one bar. Okay. Should Persian King have run at Newmarket, and if he did, would he have won, Niall? Um, the way Magna Grecia won, I, I'm not really sure. It depends on where he was drawn, maybe. But yeah, he, he probably would have been up there anyway. Okay. Who is going to win this? The Fav. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say too much about this. This should just win very easily. It looks a really weak race. Uh, never no more. Wouldn't be want to be keen on it at all. Uh, so, yeah, he's got the best form. Uh, yeah, he should win. Do you concur, Kills? Yeah, I think he looked really good. I mean, everyone was like, hoping he was going to come over here and, 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 and win our guineas. Um, but... Um Poor old Maddie can't get over. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Yeah, um, if there's one, if there's one to shake him up, it might be Anador, who was a very easy winner two uh, first two starts last year, and had, apparently had a few excuses for uh, being third in the Lagardère. Uh, when of short price, it's worth pointing out. Um, been kept fresh for this. This is a double figure price. Could be an each way bet. James, oh, I can't get away from the favourite, really, per- Persian King. I mean, he's a uh, smashing sort. Just a bit of a concern about the ground. It's probably a bit softer than ideal. Uh, all, it, all his forms on better ground than this. Uh, I wouldn't rule out Never No More shaking him up. That was a good performance at, at Leopardstown last time when he beat Mad Moon. It's interesting that Aidan O'Brien sent him over this. So yeah, he, he could be a danger. Okay, as well as Longchamp and Leopardstown, they are racing at some beautifully picturesque courses in England and Ireland. We've got Ludlow in Shropshire, Plumpton in East Sussex and Killarney in, is it in Kerry? No? Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Killarney, have you been, lads? Never been, no. Oh, it's honestly, you've got to go. It's absolutely... Yeah, no, it does look gorgeous, doesn't it? Oh, it's so gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Have we got any lovely winners, Kills? Yeah, might well have. Uh... Three, I've got two at Ludlow, basically. Uh, 340 Ludlow. Uh, Court Royal was the other horse Evan Williams had entered in the uh, in, in, in the attempts. Now, there wasn't really much chance of him uh, getting in from a mark of 126, and he predictably, predictably missed it. But he um, he's just getting better and better, improving with everyone. One over course and distance last time, uh, and is back again. And I think he's going to have to go fairly close. Probably ain't going to be a great price. Uh, given the form he's in. Uh, and in the next race, I think Flying Portrait, and now he's got a Dan Skelton horse called Hatcher, who's won four of his last five uh, to deal with. But Flying Portrait is very well handicapped on, on he his old form, The Flying Portrait. Okay. Sorry. Will he be look- <laughs> checking him out in the paddock to see if he looks a picture? <laughs> I've never been to Ludlow. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got, you know, he, he, he has some terrific back form in the book. I mean, he's been running races like the Red Rum, uh, seventh in that a couple of starts ago, uh, fourth in a fair race at Perth last time. This looks to me to be a fair bit weaker and he might just dominate. You've never been to Adelaide? No, need to go need one to day. Need to go one day. They always put really James good cars. I'd love to go there too. It's gorgeous. Um, both those tracks. Love Beautiful. To go to. Yeah. Beautiful. James, what else will win on Sunday? Uh, no, nothing much that I can find at home, but um, I'm going to be interested uh, to see in the Poolish how Coral Beach goes. Um, I think it's interesting that Aidan O'Brien's sending her over for this. She was um, a decent winner of the Kill- Killer Villain. 
uh, last season and uh, she'll love the ground because she's out of a Tiger Hill mare so um, I'm expecting a big run from her. Well, how remiss of us not to mention that race. Thank you very much for... Yes. I haven't mentioned the time, unfortunately, but... I don't worry about that. We'll exonerate you for that. Niall, what else do you like Sunday? Uh, yeah, in, in the French 1,000 guineas. Uh, East is the one I'd probably be interested in for Kevin Ryan. It was second in America to that um, was it newspaper of record. I just thought she's a nice horse. Um, I don't think this looks the strongest to me. Uh, and then I had one other horse. It runs in the... 340 Ludlow, uh, Court Royale for Evan Well, there Williams. you go. Kills has already put that one up. Oh, sorry. Did you listen to it? You zone out. To be honest, that's exactly what he does. <laughs> I was just going to double down on it. I knew so he put it up. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's very interesting. It was in the Swinton uh, and this looks weaker, obviously. So uh, yeah, I'll go for that. Sorry. Fantastic. Weekend plans, Kills? Uh, i got an ice cream tomorrow. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Excited? Uh, yeah, I love going to ice cream. It's quite great track, isn't it? Mm. Uh, and then we're covering Sunday. Lovely stuff, James. Yeah, I've got tomorrow off. Um, haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. Um, Did you go racing, do you think? Well, if I do go racing, I might go to Lingfield, actually. Lovely. Um, Lingfield's a nice course, too. Very I'm nice indeed. There. Yeah, it's a nice day. Nice flat racing at Lingfield. It's excellent. And Niall, what's your weekend hold? Uh, yeah, I'm actually off, so I'm actually going over to my brother's. He's got a newborn child called Jackson, who I'll give a shout out to. Um, oh, lovely. Yeah, spend the day, and then I'll probably go for points Saturday night, so decent weekend. Brilliant stuff. Okay, lads, hope you're back. Plenty of winners. Hope you do as well. Thank you very much indeed for watching or listening. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. However you are taking in the postcast, Maddie is back on Monday to review the action and looking ahead to what we've got next week. We've got York next week. Uh, York's midweek, isn't it? Yeah, Definitely so there you go, yeah. some great stuff coming up there. So join her for that. We've got golf on Wednesday, football Thursday. And if you can't make any of them, we'll see you back here next Friday for another Racing Post weekend postcast. Paddy Power Games has over 250 of your favourites to play online. And we're going to attempt to name them all in this 10-second ad before the T's and C's kick in. There's Blackjack, 18 plus, become